I warned you, I said, don't watch this video. This is a record month. This video is for me. Honestly, I make a lot of videos for you guys. I make these videos teaching you how to start and grow your own bookkeeping business. But genuinely, seriously, this video is for me. I know I'm posting it. Kind of a contradiction posting a public video that's only for me. You guys can obviously watch it if you want, but honestly, seriously, this video is for me. I want to talk about my record month last month. I'm making this video, I'm posting it on YouTube so that in one year, five years, 10 years, I can look back on this video from July, 2024. I can look back on the progress that I made then and hopefully the progress that I continue to make. I had a record month in July of 2024. I made $69,000 last month. And honestly, I make a lot of videos talking about how much money I make and I teach people how to start a bookkeeping business. So I did not even want to advertise this, how much money I made because it's unrealistic for anybody trying to start a bookkeeping business. I am Certainly not telling you that if you start a bookkeeping business, you'll make $69,000 next month. It has taken me so much hard work to get to where I am right now. I don't want you to think that this is going to happen to you in the next couple months. It could happen to you in the next few years, but it's not going to happen to you right away without a ton of hard work. And I'm going to talk about in this video a lot of things upon my reflection that I realized helped me get to where I am today. Let me just break down the numbers for you, aka me, my future self, bookkeeping alone, $48,000 last month. I've got a bookkeeping course, $5,000. I do one-on-one -on -one consultations and I sell digital downloads, another $5,000. Give or take, it's like 5,500. So if anybody's adding up these numbers, interest income, $8,000. I am a private money lender to real estate investors for real estate acquisitions. I made $8,000 last month just lending. And then on YouTube, I made $1,600. So all that added up, give or take a couple hundred dollars, it ends up being $69,467 that I made last month. I don't have any employees. I don't have any subcontractors. I barely have any expenses. That's pretty much all profit. Crazy. It's the craziest month I've ever had. I, this is probably not going to be a surprise to you, but I'm not a very emotional person, but I can't help but kind of get a little bit emotional just thinking about the fact that I made $69,000 last year. And first and foremost, I have to give all glory to God. I would not be where I am today if God had not blessed me with all of my abilities, my skills, my resources, good timing, everything else. So first and foremost, all glory to God. I would not be here without his blessing. Four years ago, I decided to start a bookkeeping business. Three and a half years ago, I quit my full-time job. That was a very scary decision. And then two years ago, while I was in the middle of running my bookkeeping business, I started to panic. I lost a couple clients and I actually got a new job. I got a job working remotely as a staff accountant. And then six months later, I quit that job. And then my business has pretty much doubled every year. So I made $50,000 my first year, $100,000 my second year, $200,000 my third year. I'm on pace to make way more than $400,000 this year. Profit. I'm talking profit, like straight up profit. As a bookkeeping business owner, we have so few expenses. We have, we don't need an office. We don't need employees. We don't need inventory. We don't need buildings or vehicles. Very few expenses. You just need a computer and an internet connection. And if anybody is actually watching this video, I will just say, check out all the links in the description of this video. I've got a ton of resources that I made just for you. Okay, let me talk about a few things that have got me to where I am today. Entrepreneurship, first of all, is so incredibly scary. It's terrifying. Quitting my full-time job three and a half years ago so, so scary. I have a family. I have a mortgage. I have bills to pay. I've got kids. I so scary. I went to college. I was an army officer. I, I had some self-respect that like I had a good job working at Amazon that I didn't necessarily want to quit my good job and be a bookkeeper. Are you kidding me? Like that's that's a scary transition. But that is what drives me to work so hard 
every single day. Being an entrepreneur, one of the hardest jobs I've ever had. And that's also why I save a lot of money and I invest my money. We, My family and I, we would not be where we are today if we did not make sacrifices over the past seven or eight years. We have really made a ton of sacrifices. I made a video a couple weeks ago showing my net worth as a 30 year old and Almost all of that is contributed to the sacrifices that we have made. We invested a lot of our money in 401ks, IRAs. Now I'm investing and saving $20,000 a month into private money lending to hopefully set myself and my family up for success in the future. But I do all that because entrepreneurship is so scary. If I had a, if I had a W-2 job making half a million dollars a year, that would be... 20 times more secure than my entrepreneur business making $500,000 a year. Because if something, God forbid, something happened in my business, I would not be able to go out to the job market and get a job making $500,000 a year as a bookkeeper or even as an accountant or even as a CPA. Like I would have to be either a very successful salesperson or maybe a partner at an accounting firm. I don't know what I would do. But it's scary because if I if something goes wrong with my business, I cannot just get a new job and make up my income. And that's why I try to take smart and calculated risk with my business, all things financial. When it comes to hiring employees, every, you guys, I, I know, I'm sorry, but all of you guys always ask me like, hey, can I please work with you? Can I please work with you? And that terrifies me. I, I will get to a point at some time whenever I need to hire employees, but hiring employees, that's a big risk on not only my business, but like my family, my livelihood. Like I will have to give up some of my income to somebody else. And now you as my employee, you are dependent on me to pay your bills and to support your family. So that's a huge risk. I understand I need to get there at some point if I want to grow a big bookkeeping business, but hiring employees just scares the crap out of me. I decided to get rid of my office in January because we moved to a new house. And so that was a calculated risk that I had to make a decision, get rid of my office, save 650 bucks, and just work out of my home office. I'm trying to run a lean business so that I can keep as much profit as possible. It might not be super smart for long-term growth. I get that. If I was a business guru, I would probably be doing things a little bit differently. But like I said, entrepreneurship is so scary. So I'm trying to take smart, calculated risk. If you guys have been following my journey for a long time, you know that I had a trucking company in 2021 and 2022. I decided to close my trucking company because it was not working. As much of a hit that was to my ego, I had to make a calculated decision and close my trucking company because it was not profitable. I was losing a ton of money. Entrepreneurship is so scary. Don't ever let anybody tell you that starting a business, a bookkeeping business or any business is easy or fun. It can be easy, it can be fun like in five or 10 years, but getting started, trust me, not fun, not easy, super stressful, super scary. But with all that being said, still the greatest career decision I've ever made. Okay, point number two, per first point, entrepreneurship, super scary. Point number two, consistency is everything. I know it's almost ironic. I talk about how important consistency is so frequently, so consistently, but seriously, it is everything especially whenever it comes to my advertising and marketing. There's a really interesting idea that Alex Ramosi, I learned from Alex Ramosi. It's this concept of more, better, new. And I didn't really understand that at first, but looking back on my advertising and marketing journey, it really clicks. It makes so much sense. More. You got to start with more. I did not know what to do on social media. I did not know how to create content, how to sell my services, how to market to prospective clients. Clients, So I just created a ton of content, more, more, more. It's not going to get better until you do more. And that's what I learned. I got better because I just did more, 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 more. And I learned what worked and what didn't work. And then I did more of the good stuff and less of the bad stuff. So you got to start with more and then you can move on to better. So many people don't start and they don't create a lot of content because they want it to be good in the beginning. But it's this vicious cycle. You can't be good until you do more. It's almost like if you're trying to learn how to play basketball and you're scared, you're intimidated, you go to pick up basketball at LA Fitness and you want to start playing, but you're scared and you don't want to start playing with these guys who are already really good. If you never start, then you're never going to get better. So you need to do more. You need to practice more. You need to create content more, more, more. And then you figure out what gets better. And then you can start doing new stuff. 
So I recommend if you are trying to create content on social media, specifically trying to grow your bookkeeping business, pick one or two social media platforms. Get really, do a lot of content on Facebook, more, 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 get better at creating content on Facebook, and then you can go to Instagram or LinkedIn or Twitter or TikTok. Like pick one or two social media platforms, do a lot, get better, and then you can go to new social media platforms. That's just a very specific example of how that more better new concept applies to marketing and sales for your bookkeeping business. Now, a lot of my success honestly comes from social media. People know who I am on social media, and that only happened through consistency. Like when I got started, I had 300 Facebook friends, and now I have maybe seven, eight, nine thousand followers on Facebook. I'm not sure how many, but people know who I am on Facebook because I show up every single day. Last month, a lot of my bookkeeping revenue came from new clients. I got like five, six, seven, maybe ish new clients last month. And almost all of them came from Facebook or following up with old leads. First of all, Facebook, I'm really active on Facebook and I get the majority of my clients from Facebook. That's like 100% contributed to my consistency on Facebook every single day for four years. If you want to grow your bookkeeping business, I promise if you just show up every day on social media and create a post, and connect with prospective clients and engage with your community, I promise you, you will, at, if you're gonna get clients no matter what, if you do it for four years, guaranteed, or your money back. Following up with old leads. This is another thing that applies to consistency. It's more related to maybe sales, but if somebody reaches out to me and they express interest in my services, I immediately add them to a tracker. I didn't do this at first. I didn't do this for like the first six or 12 months of my bookkeeping business. I probably missed out on a lot of potential clients. But I can think specifically back last month, one of my cleanup projects hired me because he reached out in January and he expressed interest. We had a phone call, we talked, he said, yeah, I wanna do this, let's do it. And it kind of fizzled out but I added him to my tracker and then every month I followed up with him. And this is how I landed this client. He's paying me now 750 bucks a month. He paid me $3,750 ish, I think, to do like a catch up for 2024. And I made all of that money simply because I never gave up. I consistently followed up with this guy every single month from January through July. And he ended up hiring me. He probably would not have hired me or he would not have hired me as early as he did, if I was not consistently following up with him every single month. And it's so super simple. I add him to my Excel spreadsheet, my tracker, and then every month I send him an email. Hey, are you still interested in bookkeeping? If not, no worries, let me know, I'll remove you from my list. Not a big deal, not super invasive, not annoying, not pushy, just hey, are you still interested in bookkeeping? Let me know. So consistency on marketing, sales, it's everything. Okay, so, Point number three, work hard and be organized. Point one, entrepreneurship, super scary. Point two, consistency is everything. Point three, work hard and be organized. This is such a contributor to my success. I made it, like I said in the beginning, I made a ton of sacrifices. I wake up early. I work on the weekends. I work late nights and I have a family. I try to spend, I try to prioritize my family. I spend a lot of time with my family. I try to sacrifice other things, not necessarily family time. I'll be honest with you, I don't really watch football anymore. I used to watch a lot of football when I was in the army, working at Chewy, working at Amazon, even in the beginning of my bookkeeping business days, I watched a lot of football on the weekends. I don't do that anymore. I used to sleep in, I used to wake up at like 6.30 or 7 a.m., but I don't do that anymore. I wake up at 5 a.m. every day. I work for a couple hours on the weekends when my kids take a nap. I stay up late on the weekends when my kids go to bed and I do bookkeeping work. Like I work really, really hard to get to where I am today. And I always say this, but starting any business is not easy. It could potentially pay off and be easy in the future, like after you have systems in place and employees in place, but promise you the first five years are not going to be easy. Ton of early mornings, ton of sacrifices. Just to wrap up this video, I want to attribute without like tooting my own horn. Like I said, I'm making this video for myself. I'm just kind of documenting what I think has led to my success up until this point. My ability to complete tasks. I have here written in my notes, boom, boom, boom. Like I am a task completing machine because bookkeeping is pretty much 
doing tasks. I have weekly, monthly, recurring tasks that need to get done related to bookkeeping and customer service and my ability to stay organized and to get those tasks done without too much thought, without stressing out, without spending too much time doing them and just working really efficiently, that has enabled me to handle a lot more work, which means I can have a lot more clients, which means, ta-da, I can make a lot more money. Couple more points here and then I'm gonna wrap up this video. My little journal to myself, recording my record month last month. Organizing communications. So communicating effectively with current clients, prospective clients, super important, but you gotta stay organized because I have so many different channels where people can communicate with me. Like It's not like I have just one landline business phone where people call me, I pick up the phone, answer it, or people leave me a voicemail and I call them back. It's so much more complicated than that. And it's probably like this for every other business owner, but we have social media DMs, text messages, phone calls, actual meetings like in-person meetings or phone meetings, and then we have emails. We have so much communication coming at us constantly every single day, even on the weekends, I have to stay organized. And a lot of my success has come from my ability to stay organized, specifically when it comes to communication, because customer service is all about communication. And then finally, I have some recurring emails that get sent to myself. And that has been a game changer with communicating and communicating with clients and also communicating with myself to stay organized. And then last point, I have my weekly and my monthly tracker. That has been a godsend. I'll be curious to see in a couple years if I watch this video back, I'll be curious to see if I'm still using the same Microsoft Excel spreadsheet as my weekly and monthly tracker, but I live and die by my emails and my weekly and monthly workflow tracker on Excel spreadsheet. The moral of no, not the moral of the story, but another key point I want to bring up is that I try to keep things simple. I try to keep things simple. I don't overcomplicate things. This enables me to work efficiently, just keeping things simple. I don't have fancy CRM software. I don't have a virtual assistant or an admin assistant. I don't have like a bunch of these crazy processes that a lot of entrepreneurs talk about and preach and try to sell. Like I try to keep things super, super simple. And I really think that has contributed to my fast big growth over the past four years. Okay, if anybody's watching this video, hopefully you didn't make it until this point. This is a video for myself, but hopefully it did help you if you watched until the end. That's it for this video, guys. Last month, record month, $69,000. I'll see you guys in the next video.